There are many endocrine glands in our body. Endocrine glands consist of cells that produce hormones and then secrete these hormones into our blood. These hormones act as chemical signals that travel through our circulatory system and bind to receptors on target cells throughout our body. As you can see from this image here, there are many organs in our body that are considered endocrine glands because they produce hormones. In this video, I'm going to review the relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands, and we're gonna look at the type of hormones that they make and the function of those hormones. And then in the future, I'll make another video that looks at the anatomy and the hormones that are produced by the other major endocrine glands pictured here. So remember, the hypothalamus is located in the center of the brain in a region known as the diencephalon. So here you could see the hypothalamus highlighted in green, and it's attached to the posterior pituitary gland by a stalk called the infundibulum. The pituitary gland is actually composed of two separate endocrine glands. We have the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. Let's look at the relationship between the hypothalamus and these pituitary glands in a little bit more detail. So here you can see an outline of the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary gland. In front of the posterior pituitary gland, we have the anterior pituitary gland. Also, other structures that you'll find in these areas include the optic chiasm and the mammillary body. The hypothalamus communicates with the anterior pituitary gland through hormones. So those hormones are going to be secreted into the blood. So here you can see pictured capillary beds that are going to be associated with the hypothalamus and a capillary bed in the anterior pituitary gland. The hypothalamus produces six major hormones and it secretes these six hormones into the blood and then those six hormones will target the anterior pituitary gland. The hormones from the hypothalamus trigger the release or inhibition of hormones from the anterior pituitary gland. This system of blood vessels that connects the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland is known as the hypophysial portal system. The hypophysial portal system, therefore, is a system of blood vessels that connects the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland. It allows the hypothalamus to communicate with the anterior pituitary gland through hormones. So again, the six hormones that are produced by the hypothalamus are secreted into the capillary bed around the hypothalamus. It travels through the blood vessels to where the anterior pituitary gland is, and those hormones leave the blood and bind to receptors on the cells in the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland also secretes six major hormones, and those six major hormones are going to be secreted into the blood and then target other organs in our body. Now let's look at the relationship between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary gland. What you can see drawn here are neurons that begin in the hypothalamus but extend down into the posterior pituitary gland. So you can see the cell body of the neurons up here on the top, and you can see that their axons are really long and extend down into the posterior pituitary gland where you find the axon terminals. Therefore, the hypothalamus is connected to and communicates with the posterior pituitary glands through neurons. The posterior pituitary gland secretes only two major hormones into the blood, and both of those hormones were actually synthesized in the hypothalamus, but are stored and secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. So those hormones are produced in the cell bodies of these neurons, and then the hormones travel down the axons of the neurons, where they're then stored in the axon terminals. The hypothalamus can then send a nerve signal down these axons to trigger the posterior pituitary gland to secrete its hormones into the blood. Here you can see a microscope slide of the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands. Up here is the hypothalamus, 
And then over here is the optic chiasm. The optic chiasm contains axons that send nerve signals from the eyes to the brain. So down here, you see the pituitary glands. And one thing to remember is that the posterior pituitary gland will always stain lighter. So it's going to be this lighter pink color in microscope slides because it's composed mostly of the axon terminals of the neurons. Whereas the anterior pituitary gland stains a much darker purple color and it's composed of endocrine cells as opposed to neurons like the posterior pituitary gland. So a tip to recognize or identify the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland is that the anterior pituitary gland is going to stain a darker purple color and the nuclei are going to be much more dense within the anterior pituitary gland. The posterior pituitary gland is going to stain a lot lighter. So if you look at this image here, which of these is the posterior pituitary gland? Well, it's going to be the lighter one. And the darker one is the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary glands have separate embryonic origins, which helps to explain why they look so different from each other and have such different functions. Here you can see a close-up of the pituitary glands. Which one do you think is the posterior pituitary gland? Well, it's going to be the lower image because again, it stains a lot lighter and the nuclei are a lot less dense within the posterior pituitary gland. Now let's look at the six major hormones secreted by the hypothalamus and the six hormones that are secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. When studying these endocrine glands and the hormones they make, I recommend studying the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland together because these hormones are very closely related. So I'm going to use the letter H to represent the hypothalamus and AP to represent the anterior pituitary gland. The first hormone that we're going to look at is called thyrotropin releasing hormone. Now let me list some tips to help you remember these hormones and their functions. First off, remember that releasing hormones are secreted by the hypothalamus. So if you see the word releasing in the name of a hormone, then it's likely to be secreted by the hypothalamus. Also, in the name of a lot of hormones, you'll see the suffix tropin. Tropin means to change or stimulate an organ. So you can usually make inferences about the function of a hormone just by looking at its name. So for example, thyrotropin releasing hormone, the word thyrotropin indicates that this hormone is eventually going to have an effect or stimulate the thyroid gland. Now, thyrotropin releasing hormone is not going to have a direct effect on the thyroid because this hormone is first going to target the anterior pituitary gland. And that's because all hormones secreted by the hypothalamus target the anterior pituitary gland. Thyrotropin releasing hormone will trigger the release of two hormones from the anterior pituitary gland. The first is thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. And you can guess what organ in the body thyroid stimulating hormone will target. That is the thyroid gland. Specifically, thyroid stimulating hormone is going to stimulate the secretion of thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, from the thyroid gland. These hormones increase metabolic rate and body temperature. Thyrotropin releasing hormone will also trigger the anterior pituitary gland to secrete another hormone known as prolactin, or PRL. Prolactin, that name sounds like prolactation or for lactation, and that helps you understand what that hormone does. That hormone is going to target the mammary glands in the breast, and it's going to stimulate lactation, or in other words, milk production. So it will stimulate those mammary gl glands to start producing and storing milk. Now, the second hormone that we're going to look at that's secreted by the hypothalamus is gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GNRH. And this hormone is ultimately going to have an effect on the gonads. It's going to cause the anterior pituitary gland to secrete two hormones. And both of those hormones are going to target the gonads. So in females, it's going to target the ovaries. 
and in males, it's going to target the testes. The first major gonadotropin is follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. And the second one that's secreted by the anterior pituitary is known as luteinizing hormone or LH. Now, in order to understand what these hormones do in the body, we first have to have a good understanding of the female's monthly reproductive cycle. So I am going to give you a quick overview of a female's monthly reproductive cycle and what's happening in the female's reproductive system every month to help you understand what follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone do in a female's body. So here on the bottom right, you can see a picture of the female reproductive system. You can see the paired ovaries, the uterus, along with the fallopian tubes, also known as the uterine tubes. And then down here, you can see the vagina. So let's look at what's happening inside of the ovaries of a female. Females are born with what are known as primordial follicles within their ovaries. A female is born with millions of these primordial follicles. And inside each one of these is an oocyte, or in other words, an egg that's arrested in development. By the time a female reaches puberty, each ovary contains about 200,000 primordial follicles and each contains an oocyte or an egg arrested in development. So it's paused in its maturation process. What do I mean by follicles? Well, you could see these purple little circles that I drew around the oocyte. So you can imagine those purple cells actually surrounding the entire oocyte. So the follicles are actually like a sphere of cells that are surrounding and protecting the oocyte. Now, after puberty, each month, some of those follicles will start to mature and the oocyte will continue its development. Now, what triggers those follicles to start maturing every month is follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, which we said was secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. FSH will trigger a cohort of those primordial follicles to start maturing. And what do I mean by maturation? Well, these primordial follicles will start to grow. Those purple cells that I drew here will start to divide, so you'll get more of those purple cells. The oocyte will continue its development towards becoming a mature ovum or mature egg. The primordial follicle becomes a primary follicle. The primary follicle grows even bigger and it becomes what we call a secondary follicle. And then that secondary follicle will grow even bigger and it will become what we call a tertiary follicle. Inside these follicles, you can also see that there's fluid that's building up inside of there. Now, one thing that's important to mention about these follicles is that as they mature, those purple cells that I drew in here are going to start to secrete the hormone estradiol. And estradiol is a type of estrogen. This estradiol that's being secreted by the maturing follicles is going to be secreted into the blood and it's going to target cells in the uterus. And what it's going to do, estradiol is going to cause the lining of the uterus to thicken. So remember, every month a female menstruates and the lining of her uterus is shed. So what causes a female to rebuild that uterine lining? Well, it's the estradiol that's being secreted by these follicle cells. The, this estradiol causes a thickening of the uterine lining and those mature follicles are going to continue maturing. And the final stage of maturation is known as a mature follicle or a graphene follicle. Now each month, only one follicle will become a graphene follicle. And that graphene follicle will then release the oocyte. And we call that ovulation. So during ovulation, the oocyte will leave the ovary. It will enter the fallopian tubes and move down towards the body of the uterus. So what actually triggers ovulation from the mature graphene follicle? Well, that is going to be luteinizing hormone. If you recall, luteinizing hormone was secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. 
Now, luteinizing hormone triggers ovulation from the mature follicle, and it's also going to trigger the development of a hormone-secreting structure called the corpus luteum. So if you look here, you can see that some of those purple cells that were part of the follicle will actually stay surrounding the oocyte as it's ovulated and moves into the uterus. However, most of the follicle cells stay behind. And remember before, they were producing estradiol. But now they're going to change a little bit in their function. And they're actually going to become this hormone-secreting body that we call the corpus luteum. Now, this is why it's called luteinizing hormone because it's luteinizing the follicle. It's turning those follicle cells into the corpus luteum. Now, let's talk about what the function of the corpus luteum is. The corpus luteum is actually going to secrete the hormone progesterone. And this hormone is also going to target the uterus. And it is going to prepare the uterus for implantation of an embryo. Okay, so remember that egg or oocyte was just ovulated. And now the uterus is preparing for possible implantation and fertilization. So what's going to happen is progesterone is going to increase the amount of secretions and nutrients available in the uterine lining. So if fertilization and implantation do not occur after ovulation, what's going to happen is the corpus luteum is going to degenerate. It's going to become this scar tissue called the corpus albicans. And when it degenerates, it stops making progesterone. That drop in progesterone is what's going to trigger menstruation. Okay, so once again, quick overview. Inside a female's ovary, she has many primordial follicles. The hormone FSH or follicle stimulating hormone triggers those follicles to mature. As those follicles mature, they're secreting estradiol, which is having an effect on the uterus. Only one of those follicles is going to become a mature graphene follicle, and luteinizing hormone is going to trigger that mature follicle to ovulate. Now, if a female ever takes an ovulation test to see when she's ovulating every month, that ovulation test is actually measuring for the levels of luteinizing hormone in her body. Because when luteinizing hormones peak, that suggests that ovulation is going to happen very soon. Now, remember that after ovulation, the remaining follicle cells become a hormone secreting body called the corpus luteum, and it secretes progesterone, which helps to sustain pregnancy. But if pregnancy does not occur, then progesterone levels drop and menstruation occurs. So now that we've covered that, let's go back to this diagram here. So what are the effects of follicle stimulating hormone on the ovaries? What does it cause to happen in the ovaries? Well, it caused three major things to happen. It stimulated follicle maturation. It stimulated that oocyte to leave its arrested state and to begin or continue its development. And it triggered estradiol production from those follicles as well. Now, what effect did luteinizing hormone have in the ovaries? Well, the first thing that it did was it caused ovulation to occur. And then after ovulation, we had the formation of the corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone. Now, FSH and LH are also produced in males. And whenever FSH targets the testes, it's going to actually stimulate sperm production. And whenever luteinizing hormone targets the testes, it's going to stimulate testosterone production by cells within the testes. Now let's look at the remaining hormones secreted by the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland. The next hormone secreted by the hypothalamus is going to be corticotropin releasing hormone or CRH. Corticotropin means changing the cortex. So we know that this is eventually going to target the adrenal cortex. Corticotropin releasing hormone is going to trigger the anterior pituitary gland to secrete adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH, which stands for a hormone that changes the adrenal cortex. So this is going to target the adrenal cortex. And it's specifically going to stimulate the secretion of stress hormones from our adrenal cortex, which we call glucocorticoids. Now, the fourth hormone secreted by the hypothalamus is growth hormone releasing hormone. And it's going to trigger the anterior pituitary gland to secrete growth hormones. 
These growth hormones are going to target several different tissues in our body and promote tissue growth. It's specifically going to target tissues like the cartilage, bone, muscle, and fat, and it's going to promote tissue growth. Now, we don't only produce growth hormones whenever we're developing from a baby, let's say, and growing into an adult. The secretion of growth hormones is also triggered by exercise. When you exercise, growth hormones are released to help build muscle and to help strengthen your bones and so forth. And then the last two hormones that we're going to be looking at that are secreted from the hypothalamus are actually inhibitory hormones. And so the first one is prolactin inhibiting hormone. This is also known as dopamine. So it is the same thing as dopamine, but because of its effect on the anterior pituitary gland, we give it a separate name, PIH or prolactin inhibiting hormone. So you can guess what this does. It's going to inhibit the secretion of prolactin from the anterior pituitary gland. And then finally, we have a major inhibitory hormone known as somatostatin, which is secreted by the hypothalamus. Somatostatin is secreted by many different endocrine glands in our body, and it's going to have a major inhibitory effect. Somato means body, and statin means to inhibit. So this hormone is inhibiting the body. When somatostatin is secreted by the hypothalamus and is targeting the anterior pituitary gland, it's going to inhibit the secretion of growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone. And now we have covered the six major hormones secreted by the hypothalamus and the six major hormones that are secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. So now let's look at the two hormones of the posterior pituitary gland. Remember, these hormones were actually synthesized in the hypothalamus, but they're stored and secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. What's going to trigger the secretion of these hormones is nerve signals traveling from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary gland. The first hormone that we're going to look at is oxytocin. Oxytocin targets two organs in the body. The first one we're going to look at is the uterus. When oxytocin binds to receptors in the uterus, it's going to stimulate labor contractions. And when oxytocin binds to receptors on cells in the mammary glands, it actually triggers or stimulates milk ejection. So whenever a baby is suckling on a mother's breast, it actually triggers the release of oxytocin from the posterior pituitary gland. And that results in what we know as a letdown response and when milk starts to flow out of the breast easily. And then finally, the last hormone that we're going to be looking at in this video is antidiuretic hormone or ADH. The way that I remember what antidiuretic hormone does is I first off think of what diuretics do. Okay, so diuretics like coffee make you urinate more. So an antidiuretic is going to reduce urine output. And so antidiuretic hormone is going to target the kidneys. And it's going to decrease urine output by promoting water retention. So it's going to cause the body to hold on to more water. And when you hold on to more water, that increases your blood volume. And therefore, that's one way to increase your blood pressure. And there you have it. Those are the major hormones produced by the hypothalamus and pituitary glands.